And welcome again to Cottage Talk. I am Russ Goldman. This is our preview episode of Foam vs. Crystal Palace. And it's another edition of Buy or Sell, where I have several topics that I will be talking about. And I'm either going to agree with a statement or disagree with it. Along with that, like I said, during the show, I'll be doing my preview. We'll be talking about Crystal Palace, but a lot of other topics as well. And at the end of the show, I'll be sharing my prediction. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other phone supporters find us. Also want to mention that we are part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. You're going to be hearing a lot more about this very soon. I'm just telling you that right now. And uh, I'm looking forward to this relationship building. And uh, like I mentioned, it is very nice to be part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Okay. So let's get to our preview of this upcoming match for Fulham against Crystal Palace. Fulham won the first time around at Selhurst Park. Well, now it's at Craven Cottage. So this should be an interesting match. Right now, Crystal Palace sit at 12th, Fulham or 10th. So both teams have, I guess you could say, had successful seasons. I'll be sharing my thoughts on Crystal Palace in a little bit. Just want to mention, obviously, that they have a former Fulham manager, Roy Hodgson, will be talking about that and talking about how they've changed since Roy has taken over. So a good amount to talk about, but let's start with buy or sell. So let's talk about a topic that, again, not about the match, just a topic in general. So am I going to buy this or am I going to sell it? Well, here's the statement. Joe Bryan overall was a success at Fulham Football Club, buy or sell. I've given this a little bit of thought because uh, reports are that Joe Bryan is going to leave Fulham and return to Bristol City where he used to be a a player and was a successful player. And if that happens, I wish Joe Bryan all the luck in the world with his future endeavors. Was he a success at Fulham? This is an interesting one for me to really think about. And I'm going to, to buy this and say he was a success. Reason being, he was not the player that I think Fulham supporters were hoping he would turn in to be. At times, he was a defensive liability. He was a very good crosser of the ball. He was very good moving forward. Going forward, I thought Joe Bryan was good. He was good in the championship. Not as good, obviously, in the Premier League. And that was why I really had to think about this. Was he a success of Fulham Football Club? The reason why I'm saying yes, the reason why I'm buying it is goes back to one match that no one is going to forget. It was the playoff final against Brentford. Obviously, his two goals win the match and get Fulham promoted. I know it's a lot to put on one match, but ask yourself, how will you remember Joe Bryan? And you're going to remember that. For that moment, and then also what else he was able to do in his time of foam. Overall, I think he was a success. He will be remembered fondly. You're going to remember some of the deficiencies in his game. Yes, you will. But the first thing I will remember with Joe Bryan will be Wembley. And that's the reason why I'm saying he was a success at foam. He left an imprint at foam football club, something that we'll never forget. Joe Bryan was a success at Fulham Football Club. That's my opinion. Okay. Next buy or sell. Marco Silva deserves to be in the shortlist for manager of the year. Well, I'm buying this. Absolutely. And I just want to just go through the list. And he deserves to be here. There are people that are going to question, will he win it? He probably won't win it because you're going up against Mikel Arteta, Roberto De Zerbi, Unai Emery. Pep Guardiola, and Eddie Howe. A great list. But the fact that Marco is with that list says something about Marco Silva. It says something about Fulham's season. But Marco Silva deserves to be in contention for manager of the year. He absolutely does. Most experts before the season began had Fulham being relegated. Let's just call what it is, the predictions. Marco Silva has built a club from the championship, brought it up to the Premier League, and has us currently sitting 10th. That, to me, is a tremendous thing. He deserves to be 
in this conversation. He absolutely does. He's not going to win it, but Marco Silva deserves to be in the shortlist for manager of the year. Absolutely. Okay, let's move on. Next topic. Roy Hodgson was not the best manager I've seen in my time as a foam supporter. I'm actually going to sell this. I went back and forth on this. It's between Marco Silva and Roy. He is the best manager. That's why I'm selling this statement. Roy Hodgson was not the best manager I've seen in my time as a foam supporter. He actually was. The reason why I'm going there is what he brought to foam football club. He gave them a foundation that we're now seeing to this day. He gave them this solidity. He kept them in the Premier League with a great escape. He built on that. The foundation was built, and it was built on basically players doing their job, getting the most out of his players, putting them in the best position to succeed. Was it boring at times? Yes. But he stuck by his players, and he never put them in – a situation that they could not handle. So he made players that were good players better. He is the best manager I've seen in my time. Marco Silva is getting up there. He's a close second. But for me, Roy Hodgson's the best manager I've seen. And it's not just about getting to the Europa League final. It's not just about the great seasons I got to witness. It's not even about the great escape. It's everything. It's all of the above. And like I said, the one thing that stands out to me when I look at a manager, are the players better playing for the manager? Has the manager made them better? Two managers stand out to me, Marco Silva and Roy Hodgson. Roy Hodgson, the players definitely got better under his supervision. So for me, I'm selling this because Roy Hodgson was the best manager I've seen since I became a film supporter. Marco's a close second, though. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about this match with, with the next one. Buy or sell. Fulham have a significant advantage with Wilfred Zaha being out of this match. I'm buying this because I think this is a big deal. Zaha has, let's just be honest, he has done a number on Fulham Football Club. And the fact that he's not playing really helps Fulham in this upcoming match. Plus, Fulham are at home. But not having him, I think, really hurts Crystal Palace. They have some very talented players that Fulham are going to have to watch out for. It wasn't just about Zaha, but he's the best of the bunch. You take him out, it's like Fulham without Mitro. It's a significant loss. Fulham, I think, have a significant advantage with Wilfred Zaha being out. The one thing I do want to say for Crystal Palace supporters, I do hope he resigns with you and stays for the long term to Crystal Palace. I actually really admire what Wilfred Zaha did. He made a move several years ago to Manchester United. It didn't work, so he came back to Crystal Palace. And he's made himself a legend at Crystal Palace. And I admire the fact that he stuck with that club. Will he continue? I really hope so. But him and Mitro have that in common. They stuck with their club. There were opportunities for Mitro, obviously several opportunities for Wilfred Zaha. And I love the fact that Wilfred Zaha stuck with Crystal Palace through thick and thin. I'm just going to say it, and I hope he stays at Crystal Palace. We shall see. Okay, next topic. Buy or sell. Carlos Vinicius will start against Crystal Palace. I'm going to sell this because I think, I really truly believe that Mitro is going to start last home game of the year. Is he completely fit to go 90 minutes? Probably not. But I think he's going to start in front of the Fulham supporters. I think Marco's going to start Mitro. And Carlos Vinicius will come off the bench. I think they're just going to reverse their role. So I'm definitely selling this because I think that Mitro is going to start. And I think that is the right thing to do. I'll be sharing my thoughts on the starting 11 in just a bit. But I don't think Carlos Vinicius is going to start against Crystal Palace. I think it's going to be Mitro. 
Okay. So let's move on and talk a little bit about Crystal Palace. And what's interesting about them, I, I have a good amount of respect for what Crystal Palace have done. They have now have a good stretch in the Premier League, and they deserve to be respected. That's my thoughts on that. It didn't work out that great, obviously, with Vieira, and they decided to make a change. And they go back to Roy, and uh, I'm sure that there were many Crystal Palace supporters that were hesitant or did not like the move. But what Roy has done, and I'm going to say it again, somewhere to where he has done this before, he has solidified the situation with a club and actually pushed them forward. He kept following up. He's done similar things with other clubs, but with Crystal Palace, they've actually played some, some decent football, some good football. So credit to Roy for letting his players play. And they now are sitting comfortably in 12th. And uh, earlier in, in the season, you might have been worried about their survival, but you don't have to worry about it anymore. Will he be the manager moving forward? I'm not so sure about this. If you're interested in learning more about Crystal Palace, I would highly recommend listening to Back of the Nest podcast. It's actually part of the Talk Sport Fan Network. Check them out. They had some very good talk about Roy Hodgson, about Crystal Palace, about how the players under Roy have been getting better. This goes back to a sign of a good manager for me, players getting better. Players have gotten better under Marco Silva. Players have gotten better at Crystal Palace under Roy. Not a shock because we know Roy Hodgson. So they have actually have been able to really turn around their season. So I think their season has been decent. Fulham beat them the first time around at Selhurst Park. I'll share what I think at the end of the show. If I think Fulham will do the double over Crystal Palace. Okay. One more topic before I go to my starting 11. How does Fulham win this match? This is going to be interesting because you know that a Roy Hodgson team will be disciplined, will wait for you to make a mistake, and capitalize. This team has a lot of pace. Like I mentioned, they are playing some good football. They are missing Zaha. That does hurt them, but that does not mean that they don't have players that can hurt Fulham. They do. So what I think is that Fulham really need to take it to Crystal Palace and be aggressive against Crystal Palace, but they have to be ready for that counter. They have to be ready for a team that can break very quickly. So Fulham need to be aggressive from the get-go, take it to Crystal Palace, get that early goal and build on it. Because if they don't, it could be a, a tough afternoon for Fulham Football Club. We know how Roy Hodgson's teams can stifle you. This could happen in this match. But Marco Silva's teams can also frustrate other teams. So I'm still feeling good about this match. But Fulham need to be aggressive and not just move the ball around. It could not be Parker ball. It needs to be Silva ball. The ball needs to be moving around. And you need to get the ball wide and get the ball in the box to Mitro and let Mitro do his thing. Okay, coming up next to end the show, I'm going to share what I think is going to be the starting 11 and my prediction for this match. Okay, for starting 11, this is what I think Marco is going to do. It's going to be Leno and net, right back Kenny Tete, left back Anthony Robinson, Diop and Tosin as your center backs. In the middle, it's going to be Paulinha, Reed. Tom Kearney. On the left, William. On the right, Harry Wilson. Up front, I believe it's going to be Alexander Mitrovic and not Carlos Vinicius. That's what I think Marco is going to do. Finally, my prediction for the match. And uh, this is interesting because, like I said, I have so much respect for Roy. I have a lot of respect for Crystal Palace. But the Zaha loss, I think, is too significant here. I think Fulham are going to win this match. I'm actually going to go for 2-0 to Fulham. I think they're going to score a couple goals. In fact, I'm going to say Mitro will score both goals. I'm going for a 2-0 Fulham victory, and this will be the victory, I believe, that will give Fulham their biggest 
points total ever in the Premier League. And before that, the person who owned that was Roy Hodgson, his team. So I think this is going to be interesting because I think this match will put Fulham over the top. We'll see if I'm right. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Cottage Talk. As always, please do subscribe on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. It does help other Fulham supporters find us. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. My name is Russ Goldman. Thank you as always for watching and listening to Cottage Talk. Now part of the TalkSport Fan Network.